Hello friend, thanks for joining me for another book chat. Today let's spend a few minutes with Translation State by Anne Leckie. This work of science fiction was originally published in 2023 and it is the fifth of the Anne Leckie books that I have read. I previously read Ancillary Justice, Ancillary Sword, Ancillary Mercy, and Provenance. And I will link to those chats down in the details below. I may have to dig in the Earnestly Esten archives for a discussion of Ancillary Justice, Ancillary Sword, and Ancillary Mercy because that originally tri original trilogy, I believe I chatted about that when my channel was super new. So I'm not sure uh, what format that chat's in, but I'll see what I can find. And I'll put links down in the details. But Translation State is set in the same universe as those books. It is in the Imperial Radic universe, and some people, I think, pronounce that Radich, but I pronounce it Radic, and I'm not sure which is correct, actually, but that's what I'm going to roll with. Imperial Radic, and Translation State is set in that same universe, and Anne Leckie has also written a work of fantasy called The Raven Tower, and I have not read that, but I'm not exactly sure why I haven't read that. So I need to put that on my list and get that read because I really like her writing style and how she thinks. So, spoiler-free chat. This will be a spoiler-free chat, as most of my chats are. And so I will not give away anything that I think would detract from a first-time reader's experience with Translation State because I want everybody to enjoy it as much as I did. I pretty much devoured the book because I just thought it was so fun. So where are we? We are in a far distant human society, collection of societies, interplanetary societies at this point. We also, uh, humans, have made contact with some aliens at this point in the future, and also there is sentient AI at this point in the future but the book it's this book itself is structured in around three main characters reet uh Ine, and also gavin so each of the chapters are named for each of those characters so we rotate chapter one chapter will be reet called reet and it'll be from reet's point of view then the next chapter will be maybe from Ine, and it'll be from their point of view, and then the next chapter would be from Gwen, and it would be from their point of view. So that's how the book is basically structured. But they each have something going on in their life, but ultimately they are all drawn together. So I mentioned a bit about aliens. So one main alien group called the Presger appeared in actually, all, actually these aliens were mentioned in the previous books as well, but the Presger, uh, humans have never actually seen a real Presger. Presgers, they're, they're very much feared by all of humanity, and they have set up in the past, they set up this treaty with the humans and then with a couple of other alien species, one called the Gek and then one called the Ur, R R R R R Ur. And they have this, and then the humans. Um, mainly, the treaty is run by the Imperial Radic, uh, the Imperium, right? This this sort of galactic empire. But the galactic empire doesn't control all humans, and so Reet and, and he is from a and Ine is from a society that is not directly controlled by the uh, Radic, and so that is a little bit of a tension there among the humans about, because the or the Radic think that they run everything, right? And they basically manage this relationship with the Presger, and they do so on this sort of station that's called the Treaty Administration Facility. And this is where they all meet, and they will work out like the details of their treaty, um, their relationship that they have with the Presger. Now, like I mentioned this, we've never actually seen Presger. So how humans interact with Presger is through translators. Translation state. Uh, so translators. So uh, uh, the Presger actually have gotten human DNA, and they're able to um, sort of graft aspects of 
themselves into this human DNA. And so they look, the, the, the press group that the humans interact with actually look human and they speak a language like, you know, like the radic language. So therefore the humans and the other aliens, the Gek and the AI and the uh, Ur can all interact in a sort of in a human way. But nevertheless, in the, this book, Reet is a, I think he's about 30 years old by human standards. And he is a mechanic and he's sort of lost. He doesn't really fit in. He's adopted. His adopted family are very kind to him. And they have a whole collection of, of, of uh, children that they have adopted from around the galaxy, I guess. And so they come from all different cultures. And so they are just very accepting that way. But nevertheless, he doesn't really fit in, he feels, because he feels he's different somehow, but he doesn't really know how. And um, Ine then is a, I, she's also kind of like a, I don't think she's middle-aged yet, but she's, or I say she. I'm going to talk about gender in a minute. For some reason, my mind thinks that Ine is, 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 is feminine, but I'm not sure because the genders in this book uh I'll, I'll talk about that more in a minute but okay so na is um has been caring for their grandmama grandmama and who has passed away so this person has really spent their whole life as a caregiver for this person and she get she again they get tasked with uh in this sort of mission to go out and try to find this missing person who's been missing uh, for quite a while. And the diplomatic corps of, I guess, the Radic uh, is looking for someone to do this. She hears about, she, <laughs> they hear about this job and they decide to, since they're sort of at loose ends, they decide to take that. So they go out in search of this missing person. So Reed's trying to find himself as the novel opens. And he is going out to try to find this missing person. And then Gwen is a translator in training. So he's a Presger. So he's among the Presger, but he's a, a human hybrid, right? And so through him, I say him, through them, uh, we get to see a bit of the Presger and how they are so different from humans, really. Even though they're put in these human bodies, they really don't think like humans and they just have a different outlook. For example, one thing is individuality. They don't really have that concept of individuality. There's a quote in the book that's about like getting a name to them is odd. Uh, but when they get a name, then they start to see each other differently because that person has now become this discrete person to them. And so that was really interesting, I think. So I mentioned some of the other uh, entities, the Gek and the Ur, and then the AI, I think, is also the AI ancillaries. Uh, the AI is able to put themselves in a human body as well and interact that way, but they're actually, that's just a part of them. The rest of them are somewhere else. And the, that's really interesting to me too, the AI Sveen, uh, because Ultimately, as I mentioned, the characters, all three of the main characters, as well as others, all their, their paths ultimately sort of combine or, or uh, come together. And then decisions need to be made that affects not only them, some of them more than others, I don't want to give it away, but also really the whole relationship to the Presger as well as the relationship, the treaty, right? It impacts that as well because this is issues around uh, who is who can be considered human and who who can. Uh, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's sort of the overview. So sort of thoughts and themes. So sort of the main thought and theme. Uh, one one of the main sort of themes I thought was family and belonging because this was. Uh, something that really all three of the main characters, uh, Reet, Ine, and Gwen, all three of them are struggling with in different ways and for different reasons and come to somewhat different conclusions. Uh, but to me, that was really a, a sort of a, a main theme. 
And then also gender, I mentioned about that a bit, that there are, so in the Radic, imperial, the imperium, right, the, the empire, in the Radic language, they only have one gender that, the, in language, like they have multiple, they have genders, right? But the, the language only expresses one, and that is she. So they refer to everybody as she, her. Uh, it doesn't, the biology of it doesn't make any difference. Everybody in their language, they only have one pronoun um, that they use, so that's she. But the other societies don't necessarily. So the society that Reet comes from and the society that Ine comes from, they have different sort of um, genders. And I have a quote here that I thought might illustrate sort of how it would sound because um, it to me it's it's not hard to to read um, but it's it's funny though how I, in reading it though I as I as I've exp as I've already sort of illustrated earlier in this chat where my mind actually places because I'm just so used to thinking in terms of male female gender that I will just assign them one if I don't actually know but um, uh, this is about Ine, and it says, She felt dizzy all of a sudden. She could do anything she wanted. She could send here resignation to Capping and just live on here allowance. Of course, she didn't want to disappoint Capping. She liked Capping a good deal, but Capping had been very clear about Ine having choices from the very start. So that's sort of how it's structured for Ine. But for Reet, for example, he he chooses he, so he is he, and so we get he he met, he uh, pronouns for him, and then for Gavin, who is a presger and doesn't even have the concept, uh, he actually learns the concept from Reet, or from also from some a program called. Um, Pirate Exiles of the Death Moons is a recurring sort of serial program that people watch or that some of the characters watch in order to just it's sort of an escapist thing that people that some of the characters will turn to, you know, for entertainment or to sort of escape stress. And I thought that was that was really interesting. And then, you know, finally, the other big sort of theme is identity, like, am I human? Am I not human? Am I AI? Like, what rights do I have as whatever identity I have and what group then do I belong to and what laws apply to me uh, so that was really interesting uh, sort of exploration to go through okay I think I will end the chat with that I am not quite sure what my next chat is going to be but stay tuned I'm going to have another chat coming up soon so until next time take care bye